I almost hate to start this sermon off after such beauty, but I'm going to. Here goes. I am used to thinking of us as thieves. There's a transition. Uh, it, it's common during any season of stewardship to hear someone read from the book of Malachi. In fact, that's about the only time we ever hear someone read from the book of Malachi. It's those wonderful words in Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. Will you really rob God? And yet you are robbing me, God says. You say, how are we robbing you? Well, in your tithes and your offerings, God says, and you will be cursed for robbing me, the whole nation. Therefore, bring a full tithe into the storehouse so that there will be food in my house and put me to the test, God says, and see if I will not open windows of heaven for you and pour down on you an overflowing blessing. These are the words that we hear typically during stewardship season that we are thieves. And I'm used to thinking of us as thieves. In Malachi's words, if we don't tithe our income, if we don't freely give of our offerings, if we hold, withhold gifts from God's house, well, in essence, according to Malachi, we are robbing God and we're all thieves. So let me just get this part out of the way, you know, early in the sermon so we don't have to talk about it anymore today. Y'all don't mind getting it out of the way, do you? As we've already said, in 2015, there aren't going to be any pledge cards, there will be no phone calls, there will be no fundraising campaigns. I'm simply asking you next year to tithe. Uh, on November the 23rd of this month, we will vote on our budget here in a call conference. I'm just asking you to try to give 10% of your gross or net income, figure it any way you want to. You may say, well, I'm already tithing. Well, give a little more than you gave last year. Well, I can't tithe. Well, give a little more than you gave last year. And in God's word, put God to the test and get ready for the blessings that the generosity of your life will bring you. Honor God with your gifts. Let's honor God and not be inattentive or selfish and cause ourselves to be thieves. All right, is that enough said? Just nod. So feel free during the sermon to get your checkbooks out and write a check to put in the offering place when they're passed in a moment for the budget or Lula Wilding, and I won't call you a bunch of thieves anymore. But I am used to calling us thieves. But Paul... In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 through 11, offers an idea that I am not accustomed to. And that is referring to or thinking of God as a thief. God is a thief who comes in the night, who slips in when we aren't expecting God. Uh, I've entertained some interesting images of God uh, the 1977 movie comedy, Oh God, introduced me to an image of God who smokes a cigar and wears a fishing hat and tennis shoes and looks oddly like George Burns. And I was entertained by that particular image of God. But I have rarely, if ever, thought about God as a thief. First Thessalonians, you yourselves know very well that the Lord comes like a thief in the night. And sudden destruction comes upon us as labor pains comes upon a woman who is pregnant. But you, beloved, are not in darkness with regard to this, and that day should not be a surprise to you. For God has destined us not to wrath, but to obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might be with Him. The day of the Lord, like a thief in the night, uh, the Left Behind books and the Omen movies, do you all remember all of those? And all of the Armageddon fear mongers want us to think that the day of the Lord is bad, that when God is a thief, that's bad, and that it only happens at the end of time, and it's some sort of world-destroying, human-dooming moment in the life of God, but that's really not what the text says. The day of the Lord is destructive, and chaotic, but not in some sort of tornadic, world-destroying, human-dooming kind of way. I mean, I know it's not popular, but God is more like a thief who just slips in. It's not this world-destroying God. It's a God who slips in and goes through all your stuff and turns your life upside down 
and takes away some things that you've held on to and thought were precious and leaves his holy fingerprints here and there and all of a sudden when it's over, your life has changed. And it doesn't just happen at the end of time, but you read the prophets and you read the Old Testaments, and the day of the Lord happens over and over and over again. Listen again. God slips in like a thief and goes through your stuff and turns your life upside down and takes away pieces you've held on to, because that's what thieves do, and leaves holy fingerprints here and there, and your life is changed. Has God ever slipped in like a thief in your life? Have you ever experienced a day of the Lord? All right, I'll clarify with a few stories because stories is what I like to do. Right, young people? Stories. Daniel. Daniel is a 70-plus-year-old Caucasian widower. He's a friend of mine. He's been a blue-collar worker all his life. He served as a deacon and a Sunday school teacher and a senior adult leader at one of the former churches I served. He has always lived on the right side of the tracks. Living on the right side of the tracks meant that Daniel grew up with and maintained a southern racism that was consistent with many people in his generation in that particular place. He lived with it. He justified it. He surrounded himself with people who agreed with him. Daniel has one daughter. Her name is Mary. She gave him about as much trouble as a daughter can give a dad. And uh, in her 20s, she had a child out of wedlock, a little boy named Duke. And Duke is Daniel's only grandson, and Duke has given Daniel about as much trouble as any grandson could give a father. It's just been the story of Daniel's life. Uh, Duke has spent the last several years in jail. He is now headed towards state prison for several more years because of several charges. But three years ago, before his incarceration, he told his grandfather Daniel that he had fathered a child out of wedlock. A mixed-race African-American little girl named Shirley. And after Duke went to jail, Daniel became Shirley's guardian and cared for her during the week while her mom worked, and her mom visited and cared for her on the weekends. When Shirley was two years old, just a year or two ago, a DNA test revealed the truth that she wasn't even Duke's daughter. And when Don spoke to me about this, he said with tears in his eyes, I love that little girl. That's my great granddaughter. She has brightened up my life, and I will care for her until the day I die. Has God ever slipped into your life like a thief and turned your stuff upside down and taken away pieces from your life, left holy fingerprints all over the place? Uh, Bobby took me riding to his lake house one day. I thought we were just doing that whole ride out and see the lake house thing that people do with their pastor every once in a while. But on the drive, things got really, really serious. I had preached on prejudices a few weeks before. And on the ride out, he confessed to me that he hated Japanese people. Hated Japanese people. Had come out of a post-war era and had carried it with no problem for years. Hadn't even thought about it. Just kept it to himself. And then he confessed but my daughter brought her boyfriend home from college this week. You know, guess who's coming to dinner? And they're getting engaged. And I listened, and he talked, and he pulled his truck over at the lake house, and I listened, and he talked some more, and we prayed. And three years later, he had a grandchild. And three years after that, he was in Japan visiting the in-laws that he dearly loves and would die for. Has God ever slipped into your life like a thief and taken away pieces that you have held on to and left holy fingerprints all over the place and changed your life? Brent spent his postgraduate years in law school, and Brent excelled in law school. 
But he was sitting in church one day and God slipped up on him like a thief. And in the mid-80s, we were in seminary classes together. He was a practicing lawyer back at seminary. Has God ever slipped up on you like a thief? Disrupted and destroyed, made chaos out of your well-structured living space, taken things you never thought you wanted to lose, but in the losing, you were made better. God is a thief. It's an idea that's really as old as the Song of Solomon. You know that passionate love song in the Old Testament that mystics have long maintained is the words of humanity and the words of God loving each other. And part of the words that humanity speaks to God in Song of Solomon chapter 4 is, God, you have stolen my heart with a glance. God is a thief. We too often assume that the day of the Lord is a bad thing. That God as a thief is a scary thing. But this is a God who steals our hearts and shapes them and molds them into what God wishes for them to be. Has God ever slipped into your life like that? Robbed you of something you didn't need. Something you didn't need to hold on to anymore. Has God stolen your heart? Let's pray together. Loving God, we typically come into this room and call you all sorts of things. We know you from so many different areas of our experience. We will call you father or mother, king or shepherd, our rock. We rarely come into this place and think of you as a thief. But it's our prayer, even though it's a strange prayer, that you will slip into our lives this morning, rearrange things, take away what doesn't need to be there, leave your fingerprints all over the place so that we might be a different people when we leave. Bless us with your thieving presence. We pray all of these things in Christ's name, but for our sakes. Amen.